I recently made a video about UTEP's fourth and one unsuccessful play against Jacksonville State in week zero of the 2023 college football season. You can see it playing here to my left. Well, I just saw two different teams in week one of the 2023 season on fourth and two run the exact same play. One got a touchdown, the other got a big game. Let's break them down. Okay, so we have Florida State here. It's fourth and two. It's a big moment in this game against LSU from last night. Uh, it's 17 17. It's been a real slugfest. After this play, though, Florida State's just going to go on a tear. They're going to go ahead and score four touchdowns, really put the game out of reach, win this game by, 40, by a score of 45 to 24, outscore LSU 31 7 in the second half. What is the play that they ran to get this big play, get this first down? Well, let's take a look at it. Here they have their big receiver, Johnny Wilson. He's going to run across at the line to gain, okay? He's just running right there. That's where he's supposed to go. Reason being, he's kind of the second option uh, read of this play. All right? What they're going to have is they're going to have a receiver come across, run a mesh-type concept, run as close as he can to Johnny without knocking Johnny off his track. This is to be a way to get in front of a defender who's running with Wilson if they're running man coverage. This receiver is going to run a slant, again, trying to influence the man over him to go inside. And then this receiver is going to come, and he's going to run a chase route from behind. They're all trying to influence the defenders up top to go more to the inside. And then Toa Feli is going to run out into the flat. Okay, And as I mentioned, they're trying to influence this defender, this defender, this defender. They're trying to influence them all, and maybe even this defender if he's not blitzing, to all step inside. Okay. If this defender is on man coverage with this receiver, he's going to chase. Okay, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get him to chase so that he steps slightly inside. And then by the time he realizes, oh, no, I've got to go back to the outside, it's too late, ball's in the running back's hands, and it's a first down. Okay, so realistically, in my opinion, Toafili is the first read on this play. Okay, let's say, though, however, that instead, and this is why I said that Wilson is the second receiver in option. Let's say that instead of going inside with the man, and hold on a second, sorry, let me delete this one more. Instead of saying going in with the man, he has zone, and instead he steps up and decides to cover the flat area. That's why I say Wilson coming across then becomes read number two. Okay, so basically, Jordan Travis is going to look. He's going to say, okay, I got, I've got what I want. I'm going to throw it out there. If he, if he doesn't like it, he still has Wilson for the first down. It's really important to understand. Plays are designed to give quarterbacks options. What Travis is going to do is a really good job. He's going to get the snap. And instead of going flat, he's going to get depth and keep dropping back, but also work away from the rusher because LSU is going to send a blitz right here. Okay. And it's important that you buy yourself time for your back to get out. One thing to note, it's very important to note this. If you are the receiver, and I'm going to go ahead and delete all the, all, the, all the stuff on the screen. If you're the receiver that's supposed to be coming across like this, these receivers, they cannot delay doing that. They can't take their time. It's an immediate play. It's go inside and go. Your job on this play is to influence the defenders to give the actual routes a chance to make the play, okay? If you've watched any of the UTEP breakdown, that didn't happen in that game, okay? The receiver for UTEP took his time and, in fact, got in the way of the receiver that was coming out to the flat. That caused UTEP's quarterback to hold the ball and, unfortunately, led to a failure on that play, which cost them the game. Let's run the play, though, so you guys can see what I'm talking about and why it worked perfectly, because the players do the job that they've been assigned. Let's run it. Okay, you can see we've got the receivers all coming across. Defenders, let's take a look at our defenders, right? What are our defenders doing? Okay, we got a defender right here. He's going to run with Wilson, but what's the problem? Oh, by the way, he's got... He's got a receiver that's coming right at him, so he's gonna have to be, he's gonna have to go around, or go, he's either gonna go through this receiver, or he's gonna have to go around him. 
He's probably going to go around him. Now, if you're the receiver running the route, it's important to note as well, you just got to run. You can't put your hands up. Just run like you're running the route. If it looks like you're putting your hands up to block at any point, you're going to get called for offensive pass interference. So that is a major component of, as well of this, right? You have the receiver right here who's just running his slant. He's just running inside trying to influence, okay? Nobody's running with the back. This is the problem right here I'm seeing. For, excuse me, for LSU is who's got the back? Because he's got him. He's got him. He's got him. He's got him. I'm thinking that this defender right here, who's coming off the edge, if he sees the back coming underneath, he's supposed to bail, okay, and take him in coverage. But he doesn't. This allows Toa Feli to get out to the flat. And if you notice, there's no one there. And now we're off to the races. It's a big play. And instead of maybe just getting a first down, maybe getting a stop, all of a sudden, Florida State's going to be first and goal. It's going to be basically at the one-yard line. They're going to punch it in next play, and off we go. Big play, and that's, 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 that's it right there. That starts the tsunami of Florida State. Now, you remember, I mentioned that this was seen with a second, with a second play break, with a second team. Let's take a look at that. It's with Colorado. All right, so we have here Colorado. It's fourth and two. This is a big moment as well. There's four minutes left in the game. Colorado's got to have this first down. They can't, uh, they can't miss. There's not a lot of room for error. And so they're going to run a play that we just saw from Florida State, basically. We're going to have the receiver come across right here. The tight end is going to be the one that's going to come across at the line to gain. Slot receiver is going to come inside. And this is Travis Hunter. Guess what? He's going to go inside as well. He's not the main threat. His job is to basically basically influence this corner down here to go with him, okay? They're then going to go ahead and send Dylan Edwards out on the flat. He's the number one read. There's the number two read, okay? Again, we're trying to influence and make a mess. If TCU is in man coverage, this is the guy that would have the back. He's then got to go through all the mess of, the, of his own teammates coming in with the receivers that are coming across, okay? So when we run the play, let's take a look at it, all right? And I want you guys to watch, okay? Again, we got man coverage, right? We have a blitz. So whoever's going inside, right, whoever's going to be going inside, this guy, this guy, and this guy are locked on. They're all going to go, and they're going to run with the receivers that are running to the inside. One thing that's important to note, notice that Travis Hunter is not taking his time. He's not going up and dancing. In the UTEP play that we did the breakdown of, the UTEP player took his time. And then when the receiver that was coming out to the flat got there, he ran right into the corner because the receiver took his time. In this moment, no. Travis Hunter knows his job. He's doing his job. He is going inside. He is influencing this corner. Now, again, if this corner had just, had just you know, basically engaged, jammed Travis Hunter to the inside and then side in the flat. I have no doubt that the second read is the tight end that's coming across at the line to gain. It's very important to understand. This is how plays are designed. Know your job, know your role and do it. Okay. So here we go. I'm sorry. I'm getting really fired up because I love these types of plays. Okay. So let's run the play. You can see tight end line to gain receivers actually coming across underneath. I misdrew it. He's coming underneath, but again, he's trying to influence, right? Here's the, top, here's the linebacker, right? Linebacker right here, who's going to try and run with Dylan Edwards, who's a speedster, not going to be able to do it. Okay, there's a phrase that I learned. It's called, if he's even, he's leaving. This is when I learned it from when I was coaching. If he's even and he's leaving, that means he's going to beat the guy because he's even with the defender already and he's got the head of steam. As you can see, Dylan Edwards is already ahead of the backer. The backer has no chance because the backer has to go under, under the Colorado receiver that's coming across. Ball's caught, turns upfield. Backer can't get him. He sets that defender up, and all of a sudden, it's a touchdown. This is the game-winning play, really well designed. And as I showed you, basically the same play that Florida State ran. Defensive coaches hate these rub route type concepts because they've got to have good communication in the back end to pass off as defenders, okay? You're going to start seeing a lot more match-type coverages due to the fact that a lot of teams are starting to run this in football. It's going to the NFL. 
It's going to college football. It's going to high school. It's all designed to get a player isolated out against somebody or basically force man coverage to be broken. Okay. Really enjoy doing these videos. If you've enjoyed this content, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. I know this one went a little bit longer, but I wanted to talk about these two plays in particular because I just thought it was interesting that two different teams ran these plays and both times they hit as compared to what UTEP did. You can see why they're so deadly to be run. We're going to be doing these videos more each week. We're going to do them each week of the college football season. We're probably going to do some of NFL teams as well. Let me know if there's a team that you'd like me or a play you'd like me to take a look at. We'll break it down for you. This is Coach Begian signing off. You have a good rest of the day.